A large majority of Singaporeans want to preserve the traditional view of marriage. But at the same time, some in the community are upset about the feeling of being rejected by their family and friends. Law and Home Affairs Minister K. Shanmugam said this in an interview on Channel 5's News Tonight. He was responding to a question on the 377A legislation that criminalises sex between men. If you look at our policies, they need to evolve to keep pace with changes uh, in view in society. And the legislation also needs to evolve to support the updated policies. So policies need to evolve and legislation needs to evolve to keep pace. And government is considering the best way forward. Uh, we must respect the different viewpoints, uh, consider them carefully, talk to the different groups. Okay. This affects all of them. And if and when we decide to move, uh, we must do so in a way that continues to balance between these diverse different viewpoints and avoids... Uh, you know, what I said in Parliament, causing a sudden dis destabilizing change in social norms and public expectations. Yeah. Minister, I want to look at something else that um, was um, said today, and that is um, the results from your ministry, and it showed that um, the survey done here and in the region show a substantial level of awareness or support of Singapore's death penalty. So the question is, why the need to do the survey and talk about the death penalty now? All right. Well, we do this regularly, you know. Uh, in 2019, we had a survey that showed very strong support for the death penalty from uh, uh, Singaporeans. Mm -hmm. So we want to understand where society is as well. We work out what's the right thing to do. We persuade Singaporeans, but at the same time, we want to know Singaporeans' viewpoints. Yeah. In 2021... We conducted a survey. This time, I asked that my ministry specifically also ask questions on the mandatory death penalty. Because lawyers will understand there is a difference. As some people generally also understand the difference. And again, the survey showed very strong support for the death penalty. 81% said the mandatory death penalty should be imposed for intentional murder. 71% uh, said it should be imposed for uh, firearm offences. 66% said it should be imposed for drug trafficking offences. And above 80% believed that having death penalty was a strong deterrence and deterred crime in Singapore. And separately, we also wanted to do a survey of people in the region. So we did one in 2018 and we followed it up with a, a more specific survey or in fact a broader survey in 2021, last year. Uh, this, why people in the region? We chose areas from where many of our drug traffickers come from. So we wanted to understand how much did they know about our policies? To what extent was the death penalty here and our tough laws are a deterrent? Because that tells you whether they are or not deterred. And you know, 82% of those, and these are not Singaporean, I'm talking about the region, believed that the death penalty makes people not to want to commit serious offences in Singapore. 69% believed that the death penalty is more effective than imposing life sentences. So this is uh, something that death penalty activists should think about. And 83% believe that the death penalty makes people not to want to traffic substantial amount of drugs into Singapore in, from the region. So these are the places, as I said, where many of our traffickers come from. So if you remove the death penalty, surely that 83% who believe that, you know, that is a deterrence, that number will change and more people will come in. So more people will traffic drugs into Singapore if we remove it. More drugs will enter into Singapore. There will be more drug abusers in Singapore. And more Singaporean families and individuals will be affected. So it's a stark choice for us. But give us a rationale behind Singapore's approach then in maintaining this mandatory death penalty for drug trafficking, you know, alongside the more serious... Uh violent crimes. Will there come a time when we will actually have a relook at this? Well, you first work out what's the right thing to do. And uh, for example, the effect of the death penalty, if it's a very strong deterrence, and then you look at countries where they've gone soft on drugs, and you look at the impact on families, on children, on babies. I said it in Parliament today. And here, as I said just now, if 83% of the people in the region 
believe that the death penalty is a deterrence and therefore people will not want to traffic substantial amounts into Singapore, you change that, then there will be more drugs coming in. So that's why I say we need to think about this carefully. But of course, the death penalty alone is not sufficient. There are many other things that keep Singapore relatively drug-free. A good intelligence system, strong enforcement, stiff punishments, uh, rehabilitation. You know, in the 1990s, CNB arrested about 6,000 persons per year. Now we are arresting about 3,000 to 3,500. Just see the change and the difference. How many thousands have been saved every year? And think of their families. In Parliament, I even showed videos today about the drug situation overseas. You know, a large number of babies born with uh, withdrawal symptoms, addiction babies, uh, overdose deaths, homelessness, violent crimes, and the impact of drugs on innocent children. If you look at the U.S., in 2017, 80 newborn babies with neonatal abstinence syndrome every single day. What have they done to deserve this? So those who ask to abolish the death penalty should answer these questions. So we have taken a tough line on this because we honestly believe it saves more lives in Singapore and saves us a lot of grief and tragedy and crime. And 97% of Singaporeans, and that you know, equal proportion of men and women, feel safe walking home alone at night. If you have young children, you feel safe sending them on public transport. In how many cities in the world of comparable size can you do that? You change the drug laws, drug abuse increases, crimes increase, that will change. There are always trade-offs.